Awesome. We are talking movies, everybody. Having a good time here on Open Line. We have Sean Atkins with us. He's president of the Music City Film Critics Association. Corey Woodruff, who writes for a lot of publications, also with the Music City Film Critics Association. This association will be voting on uh, its top movies, right? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, film critics associations across the country do this. Mm -hmm. And so you all are kind of giving us a sense of, of what you've seen and, and, and what's, what's great out there. Let's talk about Avatar. So Avatar The Way of the Water, this is a sequel mm -hmm. to the uh, Avatar that came out many years ago, huge blockbuster, James Cameron. There is the movie poster, and who wants to take this? Uh, I'll take it. <laughs> 13 years later, we're finally getting the sequel to the most successful film of all time, and while people will laugh and say, oh, it's the movie with the blue people, I will say to never doubt James Cameron, this guy has made two of the most successful films of all time with Avatar and Titanic. And he has also made two of the arguably the best sequels to sci-fi films, Aliens and Terminator 2. So never doubt who I would call the king, James Cameron. Uh, the way he revolutionized 3D with uh, the first Avatar, it, it, was, it was unheralded. And with this, uh, when they did the re-release of Avatar, um, in theaters back in September, they showed a sneak peek of the new Avatar movie at the end of the film. I was just blown away by the 3D of how they're going to use water in this and how realistic it looks. Um, I don't see how this is um, not going to be such a huge success and going to be the talk of Christmas when it comes out and then uh, throughout January, maybe even February. Uh, people want to doubt uh, this film for whatever reason or whatever agenda, but um, if it was anything like when I went to Disney World for the first time earlier this summer, I went to all the parks in there and there was the biggest buzz and the biggest I saw as far as crowds were, were around Avatar World there, the Pandora World. If that says anything, I think it's the right time for this film to come out uh, just like how Top Gun Maverick was earlier this summer. We got this coming out right around Christmas time. It's it's the perfect storm. <laughs> so so you, you were expecting very big things from this movie. Big. I, I think so. Yeah. And have, have you seen it yet? Is this one that you've been able to review? I don't even know if it's in the can yet. <laughs> it, it, this is going to definitely be one of those films that they're going to be working, tinker, and editing yeah. right up wow. until okay. release day. Um, we haven't seen it yet. We will likely probably see it the week it comes out, probably the Monday before the Friday. So. Right, right. And what are your thoughts? You know, I went to the re-release of Avatar a few months ago, back in September, and it's, it's so interesting, like, that movie has aged so well, even from, like, a CG level. Like, I would put the original Avatar, like, well over a lot of the CG used today in Marvel movies. Like, it's just the painstaking detail of crafting this world. And, yeah, the story beats are familiar, but the world is so fresh. And James Cameron's just such a wonderful world builder. I mean, he just creates something out of nothing. And I, I do think that the public is going to jump into this and just, you know, eat it up because we have not been oversaturated with Avatar. Um, this is not just like kind of like a Marvel film. It's not just something you feel kind of obligated. Oh, we did this, we did this, we did this. Like, this is a real event. Like this is you know, kind of like when The Force Awakens came out, you know, in a certain way. And I think, you know, like Sean was saying, I think people are going to be surprised by how much appetite there's going to be for Avatar. And, you know, the uh, we've got some big IMAX screens in town. Um, the 20... Uh, the the 20, the AMC Thoroughbred 20 in Cool Springs is actually refitting its entire IMAX theater wow. so it can show the proper way to do Avatar. So it's like, <laughs> this is how intense this is going to be. So I would just say, if you can get a ticket, not that it's kind of weird to think about like buying tickets in advance yeah. now, but if you can get a ticket for that opening weekend if you really want to go, it might be smart. That is great. Okay, next movie, Babylon. Um, this is about early Hollywood. I think Brad Pitt's in this movie, mm -hmm. right? So we'll show the... Uh, the poster here. What, what do you know about Babylon? What, what, what are some of the thoughts about well, it? Well, uh, Damien Chazelle is back, and Chazelle is kind of from this new class of filmmakers who are entering the top echelon of filmmaking. Um, he had Whiplash in 2014, which obviously was a huge shout out Sundance. J.K. Simmons won the Oscar. And then, of course, La La Land, which was just a smash hit across the board. Um, he won Best Director that year. They almost won Best Picture, but if you'll remember the Oscars, um, that was a whole kind of uh, fracas and has been permanently attached. <laughs> and um, while the film wasn't 
super successful with awards or box office, uh, First Man, his film about the moon landing, is excellent. And uh, he's just like one of these filmmakers who he's not taking the superhero path, like he's not going after the IP. He's really staying grounded and making these, you know, high budget adult dramas that's kind of in the school of a lot of the filmmakers that probably inspired him and building that actual filmography. And uh, this film is a three hour. Um, they say it's quite a party. Um, I think the people were surprised when the trailer came out that the tone was very comical. It's very uh, over a size, kind of like The Wolf of Wall Street, which, you know, Margot Robbie is in this film and was in that film as well. So um, I think it's going to shock a lot of people. The reactions have been very divisive. It's a, it seems like a very polarizing film where it's like either you love it or you hate it. Um, but. I love those types of movies because they spark so much discussion. Um, and if you really can get on its wavelength, it's just there's something exciting about being able to dive into something like that. And, uh, you know, I think that blockbuster filmmaking, why I, I love a good you know, blockbuster film, um, they can feel a little kind of cookie cutter at times. Right. It's like it's kind of, it's very a safe investment, you know what you're going to get. Um, so this is a really cool moment, I think, because you're getting this filmmaker who's kind of working at the top of his craft um, that's coming out and has made a movie that's not like just getting stance of approval everywhere, which I think is exciting. I think it's fun to have a movie like that where you can really get into a debate with your friend about this, whether this worked or that, but if you can handle the length, uh, it's three hours, um, so if you can you know, get that bathroom break in before the movie, <laughs> I think you'll have a good time with it. Sean, hopefully. do you think this has a chance at, at Oscar... Uh, nomination, that kind of thing. Uh, we'll see. Um, we're going to see it in a couple weeks. Um, we got a press screening invite to it the other day. Uh, I'll be curious to see uh, the rollout from Paramount, who is uh, distributing it. Um, can't deny the filmmaker Damien Chazelle. The films Corey has mentioned, all great films in my opinion. So I'm going to trust the filmmaker here. Um, like Corey had said, this film, when the first trailer came out for it, it took everyone by surprise. Mm -hmm. I mean, it opens up on the Paramount Pictures logo, looks like cocaine, and it sniffed like it disappears. <laughs> like, the, like I was, and it's like, oh, this is not what I was expecting mm -hmm. at all. So I'm very fascinated to see the direction Damien has gone because it looks completely different from what he's seen, we've seen from him in his previous three films. So, very, yeah, I read an R-rated approach. Yeah. Um, to, you won't see the Disney Hollywood. castle get that yeah. treatment. Yeah. All right, uh, let's quickly Emancipation. They want us to go to break, but let's quickly talk about Emancipation. What is it? Is this an Oscar-type movie? Um, uh, Sean, what about Emancipation? Emancipation is coming out from Apple TV Plus, uh, who has gotten into the um, the awards game. Even as recently as uh, last year, they won uh, Best Picture, and I'm already blanking on the Coda. Coda. Mm -hmm. Coda won yeah. Best Picture. The first streamer to win Best Picture at the Oscars. They're back this year with uh, Emancipation uh, from Will Smith. Of course, it wasn't that long ago. We had the uh, the slap at the Oscars. But, oh, that is Will Smith. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but there's been a lot of buzz surrounding this film um, in terms of the quality of it. We haven't seen it yet, but, um, I mean, the, from the director of Training Day... You couple him with Will Smith, uh, can make for a good combination. Um, people uh, say what you will about Will Smith and what he did and the band he got, um, but uh, people will see good movies. Um, and with this one in particular, and I would say for anything, even if um, a star of a film has done something, it shouldn't hinder the release of a film that hundreds of people have worked on. And especially if it's one that's as good as what the buzz has been from what we've heard. So Interesting. Okay, we have to go to break. Then we're going to come back and talk about The Whale, Top Gun, Elvis. So three other movies. Take a break. Be back right after this. All right, that was great.